Hi again, everybody. It's Dr. Davia Shepard from Ladies Power Launch. If those of you who have been watching our show for a while, you know that Ladies Power Launch is an just an amazing group of women, amazing movement for women who truly believe that supporting each other is what we need to be doing and that when we support each other, everybody wins. You're welcome to join us as a member and it's 100% free. All you have to do is go on over to growsmarternotharder.com slash Facebook and we welcome you in. We do have a couple of questions and they're all centered around, are you willing to be a supportive person of other people in business? We're mostly women, but there are a couple of really amazing men who are part of our outstanding community and we think you're outstanding, so we welcome you too. One other housekeeping matter that I love, love, love for us to dive into before we talk a little bit with our guests today, I'd love to remind you that upcoming October 17th and 18th, mark your calendar guys, because we are going to be having the Ladies Power Launch Fall Summit. You're all invited, come hang out with us. And if you want more information about that, go to growsmarternotharder.com slash ticket. Okay on with the show. Today's special guest is Joan Reed Wilson. She is an attorney. She works in elder law and she is here to talk to us today about the new paradigm of leadership. So welcome Joan. Thanks for joining us today and I'd love for you to just one more time this time with feeling share with our audience who are you and what do you do? Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm Joan Wilson, and I am an estate planning and elder law attorney. Uh, the name of my firm is Reed Wilson Case, or RWC, and we're located in Middletown, Connecticut. Awesome. And I love, one of the things that I love about you, Joan, is that you, you know, we, we have some preconceived ideas in our minds about what attorneys are and how attorneys are. And you are so heartfelt and so heart-centered when it comes to the work that you do with your clients. You're working in elder law. You're working in a field of law where you really, really do have to have some real deep compassion. And I'd just like to know, how did you get to this point? How did this develop for you? And what's the reason that this kind of law is so important for you? I mean, I, the, the reason why I got into this line of practice is because for me, uh, actually helping individuals is, is the most fulfilling thing and, and um, getting that feedback from people that they appreciate what I do. Um, you know, one, one of the books that, I read and and I actually had my whole team read and we read it together um, is the five love languages. So for me, words of affirmation is is definitely my love language. So hearing back from people that that they appreciate what I do was was fulfilling. And and in my previous career when I first started practicing, I didn't get that just because the clients were not really caring that much about what I was doing because they were just employees at big corporations. So um, actually helping people and, and knowing that I help them is, is very fulfilling to me. Um, I'm also just kind of a planner by nature. So, so that helps too, because I, I can do what I feel that I'm good at and I'm confident at doing and uh, just comes naturally to me. And I can also get that, that positive feedback from people to make me feel like I'm, I'm doing something worthwhile. I feel like I'm talking to the mirror right now because like, <laughs> I can so deeply identify Joan with the way that you feel about these sorts of topics because I feel the exact same way. Mm -hmm. Our show is called Grow Your Business Smarter, but the other side of it is living our optimal life. So Joan, I'm going to dive a little bit into your backstory and I just want to know it's summertime. What are you doing for personal self-care? What are you doing to live your optimal life? And if you have any suggestions for us or ideas for us, we're open to it. We want to know. 
Yeah. Well, um, I have a pool <laughs> and that's where I do my relaxation. Um, and I got myself, all right, I got a hammock last year for my birthday. So that's also in my backyard. So that's my, my self-care most, most weekend days is either lying in my pool if it's hot enough or lying in my hammock. Um, and we actually just came back from a week vacation. So I took, took a vacation, went up to Canada. So I had a little bit of downtime. And that, that's another nice thing about having a team here at the office where I can rely on them and I can pretty much shut down for the week and, and just check in from time to time and, and not worry that things are just going to explode here back here at the office because I, I have a good team in place who can handle things and and they they know that I need a break and so they're going to uh, try to handle things as best they can without without reaching out to me. I love, love, love that. And, you know, for those of you who are watchers of the Grow Your Business Smarter, Live Your Optimal Life TV show or who have read my book, Grow Smarter, you know that one of the principles of this show is collaboration and being able to have support and not just support, but aligned support to be able to use the tool of delegation and to be able to take advantage of the resources that you have available to you too. So like applications, apps, and personal um, human resources and taking advantage of things like virtual assistance and every way that we have at our disposal, because we have so much at our disposal to support us in our life, in our businesses, we want to make sure that we're taking advantage of that. So it's really, really great. It's so hilarious that you say that your way of relaxing is getting in your pool, because I swear to you, we have a pool, but if we didn't, I would be having a blow up pool. Water is <laughs> my relaxation for yeah. some reason. And if we didn't have a pool, I would be going to the toy store and getting a blow up pool. And that would be where you would find me yeah. during the summer months. So that's, right. The other that's, place that I've gotten a lot of relaxation lately is the, the float rooms, which oh. are extremely relaxing. And there's one that's opening up down the street from my office. So I'm excited about that. Maybe stop in after work some days. Oh, that sounds amazing. Haven't checked that out yet, but I'm looking forward to it. I, also, I also like the idea that you're, you actually have scheduled in downtime because how many of us as entrepreneurs or solopreneurs or women in corporate, I remember back in the day when I was in corporate, it was a badge of honor for me to not take my vacation time. Who knows about that? Come on, guys. I know I'm not alone. We need to have that in the schedule. We need to take care of ourselves first. It's not a coincidence that when you go on that airplane and you see that card in the back of your seat pocket that it says you have to put your mask on first. So I absolutely adore, Joan, that you're taking that time for the self-care. And you mentioned that you have support that can support you while you're away. And that leads really nicely into talk a little bit about this idea of leadership and leadership being for you very, very different from the way that we've learned our grandfather's leadership looks like. Can you share with us a little bit about how you flip the script as far as leadership goes and you have embraced a more collaborative leadership paradigm in your practice. I mean, I, th I think the, the switch flipping was really by necessity to begin with um, because I do have this why of, of helping people and helping them through a very specific time in their life. And there's not a lot of elder law attorneys um, so we get a lot of calls and we have a lot of people who are, are referred to us over the years of, you know, developing our practice. So I want to help everybody. <laughs> and so the calls come in and I want to be able to help them because I know that we have the skills to, to help them, but I can't do it all by myself. I used to joke that I needed to clone myself, but instead of that, I decided to develop this team. And in doing that, really realizing that there are people who do the marketing, 
better than I can do it. And there are people who do the intake better than I can do it. And so having all those people on my team actually makes us even a better resource for, for our clients. Um, but it kind of developed from necessity because I just, I couldn't do it all by myself. Um, and, you know, I think being able to recognize that was, was a big hurdle, um, but I'm over that now. So I think it's, it's really helpful. And I think um, if anybody else is in that situation right now where they're feeling um, like they're, they're doing it all or they're doing too much um, and they think that they're the only ones that can do it, they should focus on that and, and see if they can get past that because there are definitely other people who can do things better than, than, than we all can. You know, everybody has their own strengths and you really need to um, give up that sense of control and, and rely on other people to be able to, to grow even more and, and help even more people. So Joan, I absolutely identify with that because I know for sure I have that tendency to think, you know what, if I don't do it myself, it's just not going to get done right. And how many of us have had that thought in our minds? And so we push into what you call micromanaging. I remember I was in a collaboration and because people have styled me the queen of collaborations, I get calls a lot to do collaborations, to be a collaboration partner. And I remember some time ago, somebody inviting me to collaboration. It was great. We had a fantastic time together collaborating. But here's the thing that went, uh, could have gone a little bit better from my perspective. We got together and we're planning out tasks. And I said, okay, I'll do this one thing and I'll do that thing and I'll do the other thing. And I'll also do the website. <laughs> For many of us who are solopreneurs, we know how to do the basics of just about everything because necessity has invited us to do that. However, we're not good at it. It's not our thing. It just isn't. And so I said, I'll do the website and my collaboration partner said, okay, you know, because she's a nice person. She didn't want to like call me out, but she probably should have. So Spirit said to me, you know, you should really go take a look at her website again. And I did. And I said to her, so who did your website? Because it's so beautiful. And she said, I did my website. I'm really good at that. Why was I picking up that task when it really wasn't where I shine? It wasn't my thing to do. That was me being a micromanager. And it's me. a constant struggle. Yes. Yeah. And it's good for us to be able to recognize it when we notice it in ourselves. You know, Joan, you mentioned when we were having our conversation some time ago, five things that as leaders we should really be present to. You mentioned, for example, that thing one, everybody has a different skill set and that when we're working in team, we need to focus on the strengths. Do you have any stories of times when it's been to your benefit to focus on strengths or even times when it's been to your detriment when you haven't focused on the strengths? I mean, and that's, that's a big passion of mine right now, focusing on the strengths. I'm actually just took a course um, in applied positive psychology. And it's more about um, what I've seen and learned from my clients. Um, I am very interested in how people's relationships develop over time you know, with families because of what I do with helping a, a child who might be a caregiver or helping people do their estate plan. And sometimes they come in and say, well, we're writing out this child because he or she did that or they're not a good person or we don't speak to them anymore. And it became really interesting to me to try to figure out the family dynamics um, and I had one client uh, about four or five years ago who came to me and she's since passed away, but she was really inspirational to me because she had three children and she just focused on the positive aspects of all of them. And I thought it was really interesting because she's telling these stories about her, her children 
and one of them is a doctor and one of them is a professor and the other one uh, lives in a shack in in rural Tennessee or something. So, you know, definitely different paths they all took, um, but she didn't focus on the negative of the child who um, is in less traditional success than the other ones. Um, and I think that's so important for all of us to recognize that success comes in, in different forms for people. And this particular child was, was happy with, with his lifestyle choice, even though it may not have been the same as the mother's, she respected that. And so I think that I think is, is so important for all of us so that we can continue our relationships with with our family members and that that's one of the things that i'm hoping to to write a book about because i just see too many families break up there's some sort of argument or there's some disagreement or there's just different lifestyle choices that cause family members to to leave each other and i think that's really heartbreaking to me i i i, I really want to encourage people to communicate more and focus on the positive aspects of, of their family members rather than on the negative aspects of, of their lifestyle choices. So that's that's just a really outstanding story, focusing on that positivity. You mentioned also your second tip for our leaders is give team members autonomy. Tell us a little story about how that played out in your business at any point in time? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I mentioned earlier that, you know, certain people are better at intake, you know, kind of triaging those calls. And um, that's definitely true in my business and, and my team right now. Um, and I think if I did not give the, the person who's triaging the call, the autonomy to, to, take her time to talk to the people and really develop a relationship and figure out what the person's real needs are. And I, and I made her stick to a script or I was standing over her shoulder, listening to everything she said and trying to cut her off. Um, then we wouldn't be helping as many people. So that that's one of the things that has, has come to light since I've passed that that baton onto someone else to be able to, to do the intake and use her strengths for developing relationships with people very quickly to be able to, to help our clients. Um, I also have let go of all of our marketing and social media. And that was something that I, was very difficult for me to give up because I enjoyed that part of the business. But I have someone now who does it so much better than, than I could. And it's just developed and now we get calls from people and so many of the calls that we get are because they found us online or on on our web page um so two two very th very evident things that i i look at every single day with those two team members that's that's a that's such a outstanding example because i feel as though for many of us who are in small business or who are entrepreneurs or solopreneurs, or even who are in corporate, we do have that tendency to, yeah, we assign tasks and we delegate, but have we given that autonomy to the other person so that they can feel responsible for the tasks? And you will find people work so much more efficiently and so much better when they have that autonomy. I agree with your number one and your number two. Your number three was allow for failure and that people do learn from failure. So inquiring minds want to know, tell us about a time, Joan, when you learned from failure and how allowing somebody else in your organization to learn from failure actually helped your organization to grow. Oh, there's, there's been a few times. I mean, and that's one of the things that I, I really have to remind myself of, you know, being, I think being a, a born leader and kind of the head of all the cousins, you know, I was always um, feeling like I needed to be perfect. Um, I needed to be a role model. And so making mistakes was, was something that is still difficult for me. And so kind of 
looking that in a different light in terms of, okay, what can I learn from this? And how am I going to grow from this is really the way that, that I, I deal with, with that perfectionism that, that still haunts me. Um, but I, you know, even back to my law school days, when I was the editor in chief of, of a journal, um, there was a time when we had a whole team meeting and one of the uh, other law students who was on the journal raised her hand and brought up something that really made me feel like I wasn't being a good leader. And rather than accepting what she had to say and, and learning from it and growing from it, I shut her down. And that was a total failure on my part. And looking back now, I realized, okay, I got, I got triggered by that and I wasn't strong enough to, to deal with it. So I just shut her down. So uh, that's something that I learned from. And, and I try to uh, take a breath when someone says something that might trigger me and, and really try to work through it rather than shutting, shutting the person down. Um, that's just one, one of the examples that I can think of. I love that example because it's sort of like you're learning from younger self. You're, le- you're actually learning from things that you've considered mistakes, which I think they're just opportunities for growth. But mm-hmm. right. that aside, your number four was to make sure that you have given your team members clearly defined tasks have one person ultimately responsible, and then have support people who know what to do and can step in. Tell us a little bit more about that particular step. That's that's something that I'm still working on and developing on is the the procedures and policies for the law firm so that it is clear um, because I I still think there's room for improvement on that here. Um, I might know in my head what I want people to do, but I'm not always great about expressing that clearly. Um, So I'm trying to get to that point where people feel like it's very clear. And that's another another area where you kind of need to know the person. You need to know your audience. It's similar to the, the love languages and how people feel like they're being appreciated. Everybody kind of hears things and learns things and takes things in differently. So you have to, as as a team leader, I think you need to recognize that and realize that not everybody learns and understands things in the same manner. Some people might be more visual. Some people might need it in writing. Some people might just need it explained verbally. Um, So that's that's something we're always developing. But I think uh, knowing the, clearly knowing the task is, is a really important first step or else they're not going to know what what you want them to do. I think for some of us who are in small business or who are entrepreneurs and who have small teams, we underestimate how important it is to have policies and procedures. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I I, I asked my mom, mom, when I was born, did a little spreadsheet come up with behind me? Because I'm such a lover of the organization and yeah. the spreadsheets and making sure that everything is outlined really, really clearly. And I feel like it's come from so many years of me thinking an idea in my head and assuming that team members know what I mean. When it's outlined and when it's clear, there's 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 just no room for doubt and then the other the other pieces of this leadership puzzle that you mentioned you know focusing on the strengths and people having autonomy and people feeling even freedom to fail all of that falls into place when they have a structure within which to work so i think that's amazing you mentioned your thing five is avoid micromanaging Talk to me about how you have experienced micromanaging personally, perhaps being micromanaged and how you change things in your law firm. Oh, I, I mean, between college and law school, I actually worked at a law firm as a paralegal and the lead paralegal is a huge foreclosure law firm, which is another boring part of law that I would never want to do, <laughs> but it just, we just had just 
cubes and cubes of, of paralegals working on, on these foreclosure matters. And we had one lead uh, paralegal in my section who um, she just would look over everybody's shoulder. She would double check everything you did. She would you know, make sure that you, you wrote the numbers down the way she wanted to write it down. It was just miserable. Um, so being on the receiving end of that, I realized that that's, that's not how I want to work. It just made me feel like I wasn't trusted. It didn't give me confidence to, to do my job the way that I know that I could do it because she was constantly second guessing me. Um, so I, I think that experience helped me to become a leader who is not going to micromanage. And again, I think just out of necessity, you know, not having the time to do every single little thing, I had to give over the reins of certain things to, to other people and, and let them run with it. And, um, you know, and I've had employees that didn't work out. So it's not that every single person that came in here was just a, a great success. Um, there are certainly employees that uh, did not follow our why and, um, and giving them autonomy did, did not work out because they, they didn't do a good job with it. Um, so you have to, you have to check on things. Um, but you also have to, I think, focus on that those strengths and be able to figure out which, which tasks go with, with which strengths. When, when we hire people now, we have a personality test that we give them as part of the interview. And that helps us also kind of determine which sort of tasks are better for that person. I love that. We do that also. We have two separate personality tests that we actually do to figure out where people fit in our organization. So that works so wonderfully. And the last thing is that you gave us a bonus thing that leaders need to focus in on. So usually we ask our guests for five, but being the overachiever that you are doing, <laughs> you gave us six and your number six was clearly explain the why to every member of your team. And I even would go so far as to say, even our janitorial staff, even our reception staff, everybody knows that the thing that they do might be considered by another company to be a small thing. But for us, it's huge because everything impacts that experience that the customer has. And then our job is to light up our customers. And as our customers light up, they can go out into the world and light up the people that they come into contact with. And when those people light up, they light up the people around them too. And before you know it, just from doing your small little job that you thought was so small, you have made a positive impact on the world. And so sharing that why with the people that are part of your team that you are collaboratively leading with is so, so important. I love every single, every single step that you've mentioned to us today. And I feel like it ties in so, so very nicely with our upcoming Ladies Power Lunch Fall Summit. So our Fall Summit is October 17th and 18th. And Joan is going to be one of our outstanding speakers. And she's also an author, a co-author in the anthology that we will be launching along with a summit, which is called Ignite Your Leadership. So I invite you all to look out for that. And if you haven't as yet gotten your tickets for our upcoming Ladies Power Lunch Summit, just go to growsmarternotharder.com slash ticket, and you can get your ticket there. Joan, how can people get in touch with you? Um, my website is readwilsoncase.com. We also have a Facebook page for Reed Wilson Case um, and an Instagram page. These are all things that have been developed since I hired somebody else to do my social media. <laughs> Um, and uh, my email is jwilson at readwilsoncase.com. Joan, thank you so much for being a part of our show today. And just to close us out today, I want to read the card that I pulled for us. It says, relax the hold of darkness and be at cause. And that sounds a little confusing. What on earth could that mean? But Alana Fairchild of the Sacred Rebels Oracle Deck says, 
Dear sacred rebel, this moment in your life requires great courage. Fortunately, you possess that in bucket loads. You're being asked to allow yourself to be lifted out of one level of known reality and into the next level of higher voltage reality. Higher voltage reality requires a more absolute trust and a heart that is surrendered to the great heart of the universe so that life can happen to us, through us, and with us more quickly, more radically, more beautifully, and more boldly. I feel like that's an amazing message for every single leader that's out there. And I invite you to reach out to Joan, join us over at the Ladies Power Lunch Facebook group, check out all our summits and things that are upcoming. And guys, it's been so wonderful having conversation with you today. I'll see you on the next show. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.